Hallo und willkommen zurück. Ich bin Meister Lehnsey und you're watching Get Germanize, the ultimate guide to learning German. Today, lesson four, grammar made easy. Nouns, verbs, adjectives and everything in between. Hi, I'm bored. What should I do? Ah, ich weiß. Last time we made it fun and looked at German slang. I forgot to say that I have an extensive video list, many, many videos just on German slang. So if you're interested in learning many more German slang words and expressions, check out that video series. There's a link up here and in the video description. But today, grandma made easy. So let's go. Lasst uns anfangen. But before that, make sure to subscribe the channel and activate the bell so you never miss another lesson. I upload new videos to get Germanized on YouTube every Saturday, Samstag dark evening around 6 p.m. Germany time. Also make sure to follow me on all my social media like Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok, all of it. And check out getgermanized.de for all things Germany and become a patron, a supporter of the channel on patreon.com slash getgermanized or here on YouTube as a channel member for, well, scripts for these videos and notes that will help you make the most out of this course. But I would say, let us get started right away. Lasst uns anfangen. Learning a new language can be daunting, especially when it comes to grammar and German. But fear not, because now we'll make sure that German grammar is easy and fun to learn. Let us get started with the nouns. Die Nomen. In German, all nouns have a gender. They're either masculine, feminine, or neutral. It's important to learn the gender of a noun since it affects the articles and adjective endings used with it. For example, der Hund, the dog, is masculine. Die Katze, the cat, is feminine. And das Haus, the house, is neutral. In German, nouns are capitalized and can be masculine, feminine, or neuter. Knowing the gender of a noun is important because it affects, like we said, the articles, adjectives, and pronouns that are used with it. There are no hard and fast rules for this, so it's important to learn the gender of a noun along with the noun itself. One helpful trick for remembering gender is to associate certain endings with specific genders. For example, nouns that end in ung are typically female, while those ending in ismus are masculine. Nouns also have different cases, which change depending on their role in a sentence. The four cases are nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive. The nominative case is used for the subject of a sentence, while the accusative case is used for the direct object. The dative case is used for the indirect object and the genitive case is used to show possession. But don't worry, we're going to look at this more closely later. In addition to gender and case, German nouns also have plural forms. Plurals are formed in a variety of ways, depending on the noun. Some nouns simply add an N or EN to the end, while others change their stem vowel or add umlauts to the stem vowel. Some nouns have irregular plurals and there are a few that don't change at all. Learning German nouns can be challenging, but it's an important part of mastering the language. By paying attention to gender, case and plural forms, and by practicing with different examples and exercises, you can improve your ability to use German nouns correctly and confidently. Let us look at the verbs, die Verben. German verbs can be tricky as they change their endings depending on the subject pronoun. For example, ich gehe, I go, becomes du gehst, you go, when referring to the second person singular. It's important to learn the verb conjugations for each pronoun to form proper sentences. Verbs are a crucial part of the German grammar and are used to describe actions, processes and states. German verbs are divided into regular and irregular verbs. Regular verbs follow a predictable pattern in the way they are conjugated, while irregular verbs have a unique conjugation pattern that must be memorized. Unfortunately, German verbs have six different tenses, present, present perfect, past, past perfect, future and future perfect. Each tense is used to describe actions that occur at different times or have different levels of completion. And German verbs also have different modes, such as indicative, imperative, subjunctive and conditional. 
The indicative mood is used to express facts, while the imperative mood is used for commands or requests. The subjunctive mood is used to express wishes, suggestions or hypothetical situations. And the conditional mood is used to express hypothetical situations or events that are dependent on certain conditions. Verbs in German also have a variety of prefixes and suffixes that can change the meaning of the verb. For example, the verb gehen, to go, can be changed to umgehen, to bypass, by adding the prefix um. Similarly, the verb machen, to make, can be changed to vermachen, or vermachen, to bequeath, by adding the prefix fair. One of the most challenging aspects of learning German verbs is memorizing the different conjugation patterns, of course. German verbs are conjugated based on the subject pronoun. So each pronoun has its own unique conjugation pattern. For example, the verb sprechen, to speak, is conjugated as follows. Ich spreche, I speak. Du sprichst, you speak. Er, sie, es spricht. He, she, it speaks, wir sprechen, we speak, ihr sprecht, you all speak, and sie sprechen, they speak. Additionally, German has several modal verbs such as können, to be able to, müssen, to have to, and dürfen, to be allowed to. Modal verbs are used to express different degrees of possibility, necessity, or permission and they have their own unique conjugation patterns. Overall, learning German verbs can be a daunting task, but it is an essential part of mastering the language. By practicing regularly and familiarizing yourself with the different tenses, moods and uh, conjugation patterns, you will become more comfortable with using German verbs in everyday language. Do you now understand German verbs better or do you need more time? Let me know. Next time we're going to look at German adjectives. So we're going to expand on the grammar topic. Well, by showing you different endings and speaking more about what you can use them for in the German language. If you want to never miss another video lesson again, make sure to subscribe and activate the bell and become a supporter of this channel for scripts and notes. Do you now feel like you understand German grammar a little bit better? What topics should I cover next? Let me know how you find this lesson, if I should expand on this or give you more example sentences maybe on my Patreon. Let me know in the comments below. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to get Germanized. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.